How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massive Beer Reviews. Back with yet another review. A little bit of barrel aged hopeful goodness from Monday Night Brewing in the form of their situational ethics. This be a Honey Imperial Stout Asian Apple Brandy Barrels. One of my favorite barrels of all time. Well, I have high hopes for this, so hopefully this does not not double knots show and proof uh it's a stout asian apple brandy barrels with honey and vanilla added vintage number one so let's just dive into this sucker see what she's got monday night brewing i got my fair share of stuff from these guys i had three bottles of stout actually show up today i'm kind of pumped um came with a card they always send a card aaron williams from monday night is quite um personable when he comes to sending out beers and kind of felt bad a little bit he's like hey man i haven't seen a beer review in a while you know, shit happens. Actually, what happened was, is I think the last two beers they sent me um, were beers that I reviewed previously. So I don't re-review stuff, so I kind of feel bad about that. But it is what it is. Anyway, we're going to see what's what with this. Does that have anything else on here? Situational Ethics is a series of decadent imperial stouts, each aged in a different barrel. Uh, this bottle is an apple brandy barrel, aged virgin with fresh uh, metal foam, honey, and uh, vanilla beans at it. 55 to 60 it's probably right around there and there's a poultry 13.8 percent alcohol by volume label wise one of the best textured labels in the history of mankind i've talked about it ad nauseum um when it comes to their labels it's like super linen labels and their artwork's cool this is like a weird kind of like like winnie the pooh kind of crazy like digging to my honey pot kind of thing going on there so it's very much like brian frowdy kind of artwork so i can get down with that and as far as that goes proper glassware look at me actually grown going with proper glassware i actually remembered to actually pull one of these out for this for review that's black as night man i mean as dark as dark could be so yeah we're off to a very icky sticky start Let's see if we get a nose Hmm. I get like rum vibes off this for some reason. It could be that combination of that vanilla and uh I got it all over my nose by the way. Uh the combination of that vanilla and those adjuncts in there kind of come together, but I get more of like a kind of a rum vibe off it. Not that's not a bad thing, but any stretch of imagination. Yeah. Vanilla, it's weird. There's something so, like, recognizable about the nose that I just can't pinpoint, and I don't know what it is. You definitely get that spirit character in there. So you get in spirit, it's a little barrel, nothing too bittering, but just a little bit of oginess, a little bit of charriness, nothing too crazy. The vanilla comes through, but not in an overt kind of, like super vanilla way it's more of kind of like a barrel character kind of cranked in a nine kind of vanilla which i really appreciate and that honey maybe that's that honey that's kind of just bringing that added component to it that's probably it you're spilling everything everywhere in this thing that's what happens when you over pour during your reviews by the way yeah it's probably it it's got this weird kind of Weird in a good way. Kind of confectionery, kind of carnival foody thing going on for me. I don't know. It's weird. Sive in. Cheers. That's danger juice. Hmm. I still don't know what that flavor is. Listen, let's kind of walk it back and just talk about the beer and try not to fixate on what I can't think of. Nice mouthfeel. It's not thick, not thin, some are floating in the middle. More kind of like a weird kind of Imperial Porter vibe. Like a not even weird. Just an Imperial Porter vibe more than a stout vibe. I kind of dig that, to be perfectly honest with you. It does have this kind of apple brandy thing going on, but it's elevated somewhere where there's an added fruit component to it, to where there's like peach or some kind of like more like stone fruit characteristic to that apple brandy portion of the show, which I'm not going to sit here and say I would love more times than not, but in this beer, it actually works. So it adds like, you ever have like that orange and a stout? 
So you have that orange stout kind of thing going on. Think of that, but more of like a peach kind of vibe. Again, there's no peaches in this, but this is the way it comes off for me. I'm guessing that combination of honey and vanilla is what really is kind of making that work. And you're like, okay, asshole. Honey and vanilla. How does that actually equate to a peach? I don't know, but it kind of, that's where I think it'll equate. So that's where I'm going to land with it. Um, it's got a nice mouthfeel. There is a subtle bittering to it, which is really appreciative, especially with a lot of barrel-aged beers. A lot of people get too cloying, a little bit too sweet. But there is a bittering to it. I think I'm just missing the mark. I'm missing mark, not them. I'm missing mark in this Apple Brady Barrel. I think this is just super Apple, Apple Ford Apple Brandy Barrel. Almost to the point where it's like slightly like cider esque kind of apple brandy Ford to where it's throwing me for a loop. And I think that's where I'm kind of thinking I'm getting a little bit of peach here. I'm getting a little bit of that there. I think it's just that kind of apple cider, apple brandy Ford. And I'm not used to that in a lot of darker beers. Typically, when you're talking about an apple brandy in a barrel, you know, or an apple brandy barrel aged beer is what I should say you're getting like this kind of brandy spirit that might give you a little bit of apple brandy vibes. This is by far and away the more apple brandy forward barrel that a barrel beer that I've ever had to the point where it's kind of making me second guess everything I'm tasting in a beer. Not in a negative way. Everything is super tasty. There's nothing negative about the beer in the grand scheme of things. If you're going to call it an Imperial Stout, it comes off more like a porter. We could sit here and bitch and moan, but I actually like that mouthfeel more than a super thick kind of uh, Imperial Stout. So that is not a negative for me. It's that how aggressive the apple brandy portion of the barrel is, is not a negative. It's more so that I'm not used to it. So it's kind of taking me back a little bit. And I think that's fun. When you get new flavors or more aggressive flavors in a very digestible way because you know you can have a lot of spirit barrel forward beers you can have a little too forward um barrel character in beers where it's a little too aggressive and kind of off puts you about the beer i like this i don't know what it is man it's it, it's kind of like fucking me up a little bit in a very fun way i don't know what else to say Let's cut the back to the basics here. Let's just try not to get too cool for school and actually speak to this beer in a very basic way. Apple Brady Ford. Nice a stout base that comes more like a porter, but it has a nice bittering malt to it. Nice kind of uh, uh, slightly chocolate, a little bit baker's chocolate, a little bit kind of semi-sweet chocolate, kind of bittering malt. The vanilla comes through cool. The uh, honey actually comes through more often than not. That's more of a mouthfeel thing, along with a little bit of kind of like dryness, because the same like enzymes it, 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 like uh, that people use for like uh, brute beers exist in honey. So more often than not, it comes off a little bit drier. So that might be tempering a little bit of sweetness in here, which is really appreciative. So you get that little bit of mouthfeel bump. You get that little bit of of um, of, of sweetness kind of bumped down, but you still get that honey portion of the show. And I think that combination of that honey and vanilla, along with that apple brandy barrel, just makes for this really kind of unique kind of confusing. I said at the outset, I know I'm jumping all over the place here. I said at the outset, it reminded me of carnival, carnival food. And it reminds me of kind of like a candy, a caramel candy apple. But replace that caramel with like kind of like a chocolate caramel candied apple but soak the apple in a brandy beforehand that's kind of really where it's coming off for me so it's a lot of sharper flavors because that's kind of where the candy apple comes off for me it's obviously not a soft flavor it's a very sweet and sharp and all that kind of stuff flavor when you're talking about a candy apple but it, it's still beer number one so it's kind of that unique twist to you're getting a lot of those kind of candy apple in a way i described it kind of flavors in a more kind of rounded edge beer format it's just unique i mean honestly i'm i'm a fan of um monday night in their barrel aging program i like a lot of their beers actually their hazies are a little hit and miss for me but um a lot of their barrel age stuff is quite nice 
some of the better stuff I had, actually. They've been on a couple lists of mine for some of the better Brittle H stuff I've had. And this one's... I'm not going to sit here and say it's the best. Let's actually cut to that, Chase. Is this the best barrel aged stout that I've had as of late? I think it's in a conversation, but I don't think it's at the top. Is it one of the more interesting ones? Yeah. And that might be the top. It might be the top of that list. And I think that list is better than just the knee jerk, visceral, is this a good and barrel aged stout kind of list? The interesting stuff is really what piques my interest. So. It's kind of weird because you, I'm drinking this beer, I'm enjoying the shit out of it, but I'm not sure if I love it only because I think I'm thinking about it too much, if that makes any sense. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, valued, valued availability. I know you can find these beers. I actually don't know the price point, so that's a little poopy of me, but if anybody out there actually knows the price point of their stuff. I don't think it's too poopy. I know a couple of people have actually told me the price points of this stuff because you actually get them from place to place, but it is what it is. So let me know and leave you with if you like what we like us. If you like apple brandy, I mean, that is number one on your list. If you like legitimate apple brandy, not that you like apple brandy barrel aged beer, if you actually like apple brandy in general and you like big imperial stouts i think this is probably the closest kind of merge of those two while still staying beer in a very fun way so if you dig those things apple brandy barrel aged imperial stouts i think this is gonna really do you or if you like interesting beer i mean this is kind of where this one lies for me i'm kind of excited to dive in the other two they sent because this one is showing a very fun kind of pattern when it comes to the way the barrel shows up and the way the adjuncts work so yeah if you like interesting beer you'll like this beer there you go another review in the books hopefully you guys enjoyed it down there if you want to talk about it massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff beer massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing and hopefully you guys enjoyed the review hopefully you're enjoying a nice little apple brandy jam right now and we'll see you next time cheers <laughs>